Hello, and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today is podcast number 1,509. The topic is nutrition, and the title is How My Clients Managed Their Nutrition During a Holiday. So in America, we just celebrated Thanksgiving, and anytime there's a holiday, there's always deviations of schedule, different foods available, uh, just everything in our normal life kind of goes awry. (laughs) So what... I wanted to share today was how my clients managed to kind of stay on track. If they veered off, how do they veer off not too much? Uh, And just how did the different perspectives, how did they do? And then I want to talk about kind of like a resource that we have for how you fall through uh, follow through with diets uh, during holidays. It's just an old podcast number 1,481. So in that podcast, 1,481, it's a nutrition podcast titled How to Avoid Falling Off Your Diet Through the Holidays. You can listen to that as motivation and it gives you the steps when you're coming up to the next holidays, uh, which for most people is, you know, uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, that kind of stuff. So the things that are coming up in in December here. So what I want to do is talk through three examples and then share some general information. So one example is a guy, he trains, his main goal is strength and rehabbing an old injury that he has. Uh, Now, he had the injury before we started working together. He was afraid and kind of timid to get back to lifting heavy, but he really loves lifting heavy, so he just wanted some guidance. So that's why he reached out. We started working together. Uh, So we work for strength. Uh, in, uh, rehab of that injury. He wants to build muscle tissue while kind of minimizing or losing body fat. So he wants to try to get better body composition. Now, what he did was if we look at his uh, Thursday, which was when Thanksgiving was, he reduced his carbs and fats early in the day. So in the morning, he had protein and about half the amount of carbs that he normally would have. And then he ate a little bit of everything <laughs> at his uh, his Thanksgiving lunch, kind of started around 2, and he ate kind of continuously <laughs> till about 6 or 7 at night, he said. And then before he went to bed, he had a protein shake. When looking at his calories, he was 100 calories over for a non-training day. His non-training day range of calories is uh, around 200. His training day range of calories is actually above that by 200. So he was actually kind of in between his non-training and training days. So he didn't eat 100 calories way over. He just ate 100 calories over for a non-training day. Well, the good thing was he had maintained his uh, work schedule and kind of made it to where he was able to lift the day before on Wednesday and he was able to work out the very next day on Friday. So on the workout on Wednesday would have caused a lot of muscle damage. His metabolism needs, his caloric needs would have been higher on Thursday because he would still be recovering from the workout on Wednesday. Now, if he had refilled his glycogen stores, and I'll skip some of the details of that, but basically if he ate enough food that all the reserves in his body was tip top, uh, tipped off, uh, topped off, there you go, golly. So if they were all topped off, then what would happen is if he had any excess above that, it would, it would, be contributable towards body fat to some to some aspect. Well, by lifting the next day, it made sure that he burned off uh, his reserves and kind of put his ba- body back in a state where if there's any minimal excess, he would just be most likely put back towards energy usage for that moment or uh, recovery usage from the workout. So by working out the day before, he made sure that he was in more of a caloric need the next day. And by working out the day after, he made sure that he reestablished a normal, healthy balance of calorie needs in his body. So he wasn't end up having too much because he put his body back in a deficit kind of state by working out. So the big things he did there, which was really awesome, was he reduced carbs and fats earlier in the day. He didn't skip the meals. He didn't skip food because that's not a good idea. He just reduced it, which allowed him for more caloric room 
in his like Thanksgiving lunch dinner, dinner. <laughs> and then he had a protein shake before bed, which was great because that got his protein up to the pot, like the right range. And it made sure that as he went to bed at night, his body had all the protein it needed to still be repairing the muscles from the, from the workout the day before. So he did a great job. He kicked ass. Good job. Now, another client, they, uh, her goal is fat loss and strength, and she wants to improve muscle shape. But her main goal is losing fat and getting stronger. Well, she worked out Thursday morning. She has a home gym, so she worked out Thursday morning. Awesome. So it set her body up for the rest of the day where it was going to be soaking in calories to try to do repairs and kind of like put her body back to a healthy state following the the stress of the workout. So if she did have any excess, it wouldn't have been contributed right to body fat. The body would have had stuff to do with it. Well, she ate little meals throughout the day. She didn't have like a single time where she sat and ate. She just kind of picked and ate, picked and ate, picked and ate the whole day. She said that she was doing a lot of the cooking, a lot of the meal prep for the family. So so, you know, if she tried to sit down, all of a sudden a kid needed something or somebody needed a spoon for this dish or da 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 da. So it really wasn't much time to sit down. So she ate kind of sporadically throughout the day. She also went for a 10 minute walk in the late afternoon with her sisters. She said she doesn't normally get to see them. So they went for a walk and just chit chatted, which was great. And she ended up hitting all of her targets by the end of the day. It was awesome. So she didn't sit down for a singular meal. She just kind of you know, picked and things all day, but she said that she checked in on her nutrition app, uh, around right before the sisters went for a walk. She said she checked in and saw where protein was, saw where calories were, and she kind of figured out what to do for the rest of the day. So that was awesome. So she lifted early in the morning, which set her body up to need excess. If there was any excess, she ate whatever she wanted kind of throughout the day, but she didn't overeat anything. She didn't deny herself something, but she didn't overindulge. Great kind of balance there. She went for a walk, which helps digestion, helps burn a little bit more calories. And she checked in with her nutrition app midday, so that way she knew she would end the day on point with her targets. She freaking kicked ass. Great job. Now, another client, uh, his goal is fat loss with better body composition. If he gets stronger, that would be nice, <laughs> he said, but he wants to lose body fat, but still look muscular. And he reported that he, quote unquote, ate like a jackass. <laughs> he said, I ate like a total jackass. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> so I started looking through the data and everything. And to give a background of it, he had dieted for 20 weeks and he had reached his like weight goal. He had tried to get down to a certain weight. It took him 20 weeks. It got there. And we've been holding that for about eight weeks. We're, we're like, the end of the eight weeks would have been yesterday on Monday. So we held it for eight weeks. But during that hold time, uh, we were just trying to basically maintain that new weight and get it created as a set point. So his body just kind of like it prefers to stay there now. But it was also to mentally recover. He pushed really hard during the 20 week diet. And he was pretty fried mentally by the end of it. So we said, hey, you know, there's no need for us to push any harder. You got the goal. Congratulations. Let's just sit here. Let's stay here. So we were set to start to get strict again uh, yesterday, which is Monday, after the eight weeks. He was fired up. He's excited. But he said that he decided to eat whatever he wanted on Thanksgiving, knowing that on Monday we were going to start super strict again. That normally annoys me <laughs> because I'm like, damn it, you know, you do all this work and then you, you know, da 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 da. So it's kind of like if you're about to go, you know, if I want to go on a journey to become healthy, I don't break my leg and then start the journey. You know, you're just setting yourself back. You're just going to make it harder. But he actually did really well. Uh, when we look at the numbers, he was actually only 300 calories over, which isn't overly significant it's not really gonna mess anything up uh so he did a good job actually even though he quote unquote ate like a jackass and he's now fired up and kind of dedicated to get back into the nutrition so i'm happy for him so his version of eating like a jackass was only 300 calories over not 3,000. now i wanted to share those three stories because they're all slightly different they all did a little bit of something good and maybe not something good <laughs> But they they did well with where they were. So, for example, the guy who lost all the weight in 20 weeks and then we held it for eight weeks, just because he ate like a jackass one day 
doesn't really undo anything. He just gains a bunch of, a little bit of water weight. He might gain three, four pounds of water. Maybe, you know, I don't even know, like barely a quarter pound of fat, if that. <laughs> like, it would be so small amount of fat that he might gain from one, like, one day. And that's something that helps uh, all of my clients. And what I wanted to kind of talk about for everyone else to hear and put to use is what helped my clients make the best choices and have a healthy mindset was two big things. I'm sure there was a lot more, but two for today's podcast. <laughs> Number one was to know what truly mattered. It doesn't matter if they eat, you know, white potatoes versus sweet potatoes. If they want to have sweet potatoes with marshmallows on it, which people, I think, only in the South do. I'm not sure. I'm from Pennsylvania originally. I don't remember there being marshmallows on our sweet potatoes. <laughs> um, but whatever, whatever it is that you eat, it doesn't really matter what you eat as much as it matters how much you eat. The what of what you eat doesn't really matter much when you're talking about like singular events or like a singular day. Now, if I ate a whole diet of ice cream and pizza, even if I controlled my calories, I'd probably feel like crap. I might, I, I would still kind of lose weight in the direction I wanted to, uh, but I would feel like crap the whole time because your digestion would be awful, your energy would be highs and lows, you might feel super bloated the whole time. So what you eat matters in the long term regards to kind of how you feel during the diet, maybe mood and energy balance, things like that. But for a single day, especially, did it really matter if you had white potatoes or scalp potatoes or sweet potatoes? No. You didn't even have to skip potatoes entirely because carbs aren't the enemy. <laughs> okay? So knowing what truly matters helps. They were tracking their calories, and if they could, they were tracking their protein. Everything else from there, who gives a crap? You know, if you want to have, you know, pumpkin pie, go for it. As long as you're hitting your calories and your protein, the what of what you eat really doesn't matter much. And again, on a singular day or short-term basis, it really doesn't. So knowing that means that they could eat whatever was around the house as long as they got their calorie somewhere within range by the end of the day. That's pretty awesome. It's awesome to know that because that also helps you have a healthy mindset. Not only are you going to stay on track physically, but you're going to stay healthy mentally. Our podcast 1232 is a nutrition podcast titled Start Here. You can find all of our podcasts on our website, www.brutalirongym.com. I kind of stuttered through that, sorry. So www.brutalirongym.com. You can find all the podcasts there. But podcast 1232 will teach you what steps to take and what truly matters when it comes to nutrition and to set up your own nutrition plan. So podcast 1232 will teach you how to write your own nutrition plan. <laughs> Pretty awesome service there for free. Just listen to it, do it, and you're going to be successful. Uh, now, the second thing that really helped my clients was maintaining long-term perspective. We talked a little bit about this uh, in podcast number 1505, so just four podcasts ago, titled Getting Back on Track is that one day in a multiple month journey, maybe a multiple year, multiple decade journey, like if you want to eat healthy and to look good, feel good, be strong, build muscle, whatever it might be, you're, you're hopefully assuming that that's going to take a couple months at least. <laughs> uh, and it might hopefully turn into, you know, years if you want to do a really big, cool, uh, you know, challenge or a big, cool accomplishment or maybe a lifetime because you're trying to learn how to eat healthy for life. When you're looking at multiple months, multiple years, multiple decades, a single day doesn't make or break your results. You are not a failure, a loser. You're not destined, you know, to whatever it is. <laughs> you know, it might be your negative thoughts. One day doesn't define you. We all, myself included, have screwed up a hell of a lot more than one day of our life. <laughs> you know, said some things we shouldn't have said, did some things we shouldn't have done, or didn't do some things we should have done. It just, we've all screwed up a lot. But, you know, mistakes don't define us. It's what you do to recover from those mistakes. It's what you do on the consistent basis. Try not to mistake, make that same mistake twice. Or if you make it three, four, or five times, you're still working to correct it. You know? 
one day doesn't make or break you as a person. It doesn't make or break your journey, the results you're going to get. So for my clients, it, it seems like everybody did pretty well. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. They did a couple of the steps and things that we mentioned in podcast number 1,481, which was the nutrition podcast titled How to Avoid Falling Off Your Diet Through the Holidays. They did a great job. You know, some people, like I said, they reduced carbs and fats outside of the time that they knew they were going to eat a lot. They did a protein shake at the end of the day to make sure they were on track. They tracked their they tracked their stuff and checked in on their macros in the middle of the day to see where they were. So there were some really cool things they did. And I'm very happy for everybody. And I thought it might be fun to share for everyone else kind of what steps they did, what were the little tricks they did, like working out in the morning, going for a walk in the afternoon. But then also, how do they know to make the right choices? How do they know what to do? And that's knowing what truly matters, which you can learn in podcast 1,232. And then maintaining a healthy long-term perspective, which you can learn about in podcast 1,505. Awesome. Well, congratulations all the clients. You guys kicked butt, and I'm super happy for everybody. If anybody else has any questions, uh, just reach out, let me know. I'm always, always, always happy to help. Cool. Well, if you like today's podcast or the podcast in general, please share the podcast. If you share it on social media, that does reach the most amount of people. But also you can share in a conversation with somebody. Just let them know that we answer questions for free, and we'll do that for them if they just reach out. Thank you to those who donate to support the podcast. The podcast is well over $1,000 a year for hosting costs. I give an hour to it every single day. Uh, actually, today, uh, you'll be listening to this tomorrow, but today's my birthday. Yay for me. <laughs> and uh, so I give an hour to this thing. I love this podcast. I love the effect it has on people. And I, I do it, you know, anytime, all the time. So I really appreciate the financial support to keep this going. Uh, and I promise to do my part to keep putting out the information. So thank you to those who donate. I do appreciate it. If you want to donate, you can do so at our website, www.brutalirongym.com. Also, if you like the information we share in our podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. I post pretty much every day on Instagram, and it's usually content that's different than what you would hear or see in a podcast. I guess you don't see it, <laughs> so here on the podcast. And then I've been posting more and more on YouTube, and I'm going to continue to try to put up more content, especially some training education videos where I'll film what I'm doing in workouts and talk over it and kind of teach along the way. So you can check that out on our YouTube channel under the name Brilliant and Chip. If you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, anything you want to know, let us know at our email, brilliantgym at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.